Welcome back to another edition of Grist Talk. I'm your host, Paul Camp. I'm here with men's basketball coach, Greg Campy. Greg, thanks for joining us. Uh, My pleasure, Paul. I'm always glad to be here on the number one rated show in the country. Coach Campy said off the air, he's, he wasn't watching the Daytona 500 last night because he was busy watching the boys. So I asked him about his voice. Coach, uh, this is you get to that point in the season. You've been grinding for a few months now. Uh, notice the last couple of years, you actually your your health doesn't necessarily decline. Your voice gets your voice gets weak. Very gruff voice. The eyes, you know, they get they do get a little droopy. I gotta admit. But this year, you seem to be handling it a little better. Uh, it's that time of the year, you know. I mean, it's everything you do is for February and into March. And here we are in March and uh, playing pretty good and high expectations. Talk about prepping the team as a three seed. You've gone in as the number one the last couple of years, and how does how does that differ for you? It really doesn't. I mean, the, the only place it differs is in the media. You know, the media is more interested in talking to you when you're the number one seed than you. The, you know, right now everybody's attention's on Oral Roberts and South Dakota State, and everybody's talking about how those two are going to have a great tournament and meet in the finals. So it's our job to try and make sure that doesn't happen. Um, you've talked uh, extensively earlier this season about hoping to win out, finish 11 and 7. You guys managed to do that. Would you say the number three seed is ideal considering the way you guys started the conference season? Well, I think that when you look at that two weeks that we had there where we lost six in a row, four conference games in a row, to be where we're at today, I would say, is, is you got to be very pleased with that, you, especially when you have such a young, fragile team. You don't know what's going to happen to a team like that. And, and they were able to dig deep and, you know, pull themselves up by, by the bootstraps or however the old-fashioned sayings are and, and uh, turn, them, turn this season into a pretty darn good season. I, I, you know, we've had some uh, tremendous games and we've had a lot of fun and a lot of good things have happened to us this year. Uh, it's, it's been a definite build for the future. I, I think that we're solidifying uh, where we're going to be the next few years with these young kids and now it's a matter to let's make the future today. You guys have a pretty good head of steam going into five wins straight in, in league play. Um, can you just talk about how important that is to to your success in the tournament? Well, confidence breeds, you know, a good play. And, and when you have confidence in what you're doing and confidence in your teammates and things like that, that, that breeds good play. So uh, right now we're at a, at a very high confidence-wise. We feel very good about ourselves. We're shooting the ball extremely well. We went on the road last week and I think we were, you know, one game we were 14 of of 28 from the three, and the other game we were close to 50, we were above 50% until it became such a blowout that the stats started to get skewed at the end. So, you know, on the road we're shooting it well. We're better defensively today than we've been at any time this year, which is a good sign because, you know, when you're as young as we are, you have to continue to improve, and we've done that. We didn't hit the wall. We never hit that wall and said, okay, you know, uh, you know, we're in that dull time of the season, and I think veteran teams will do that sometimes where young teams keep it getting better, and that's what we've done, so we're excited. I'll talk about that road record and how, does, how that plays into this, this tournament that has to vote well for you guys. Well, there's a good chance that, you know, um, we could see road-like games on, on this trip, and we, we have in the past. And, you know, we've, we've had to play South Dakota State two of the three times we've played it. In, uh, in Sioux Falls, and uh, it could work out that way again, but you know, we really just have to worry about uh, Southern Utah right now. I can't think about that, so it'll be a neutral floor. Uh, there won't be a lot of people there because it'll be the last session, the last game of both of the first session. 9.30 Yeah, it's the last game. There'll be two uh, men's games Saturday, four women's games have been played, and three men's games have been played in that first round. It'll be the last game, so I'm sure everybody will be tired. Uh, Media people will be out wherever you guys go after games. Nobody will be there. It'll just be a. You we'll know, stay in the media room. We shut it down in the media room. Uh, so we do. If nobody shows up, can we just mail in the score? I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm going to ask you about Southern Utah. I played them twice already this year. Um, played them tw three times again last year. Met them in the quarterfinals also. Are you get sick of those guys? Well, it's the last time we'll ever play them. Win, lose, or draw. This is it. We'll, we'll never see them again. So. Um, can't be sick of something like that. You know, we just, we just, uh, it's a tough matchup for us because one of the things they do very well is one of our weaknesses, and that's their very, very good offensive rebounding team. And my guess is if they beat us, it's going to be come down, boil down to that. And then one of those two kids they got having great nights. Uh, they've got a couple kids that can have great nights. And one of them could have a great night. And if they pound us, pound the glass on us, 
uh, we could find ourselves on our way home. So those are the keys to the game. We've got to offer got to keep them from getting offensive rebounds. And then the other thing is, is they they um, struggle to guard us man to man. Um, they fouled us a lot in the two games uh, because of our quickness, and I'm sure that's what they're working on this week. And maybe they'll show up in a zone. I'm not sure what they're. I'm, I'm expecting to see something because uh, Rogers a veteran Wiley coach, and I know we're going to see something. Now, uh, can you talk about the, the difference in preparation, having planning for potentially three games in three days as opposed to three and four getting that second day off? Well, for me, there is none because our whole thing is we're going to plan for Southern Utah. Um, we're not planning for anything else but Southern Utah. We're, we're, I won't even look at anything but them. Um, the difference during the season, we go on a road trip and I'll start before we even play the Thursday game. We'll start prepping for the Saturday game. We won't do that here. We'll, we'll have if we're fortunate enough to win, we'll have 24 hours to get ready for uh, whoever we play next, and, and the same for that team. Uh, so, you know, I, we can't do that. You, you, you've got to stay focused on the task at hand. You have to win in advance, win in advance, and that's all you can do. This uh, conference race, we've been talking all season about how it's an incredible. Can you remember a tournament this competitive from the outset? Well, no, because I don't think our league's ever been this strong, one through eight. You know, I mean, Fort Wayne's beat Valpo. Valpo won the Horizon League. And Valpo, you know, they won the Horizon League. And Fort Wayne's the eighth place team in our league, and, and they beat them. So, you know, you're, you're talking, if they're capable of beating Valpo, they're capable of beating Moral Roberts. Um, so you don't know what's going to happen in this tournament. I mean, it's, it's we've gone in the last few years with a, a first round game that, you know, Actually, most first and second round games, we had 20 point leads in it. Things like I don't think you're going to see that this year in the tournament. Uh, Travis Bader's been back in the lineup, the uh, starting lineup, the last couple of days. Do you see that uh, con uh, continuing in the conference tournament? Yeah, I'm going to start him in the conference tournament. What was happening is, you know, I took him out of the starting lineup when we mixed things up, and he, he started making shots. So we're like, well, we might as well keep bringing him off the bench. He's making shots. And it's nice to have somebody come off the bench and score for you, but. You know, the bottom line is what was happening is he was going in the game at the 17-minute mark and never coming out again. And that, that's not good. I mean, to play 37 straight minutes. I, so what I want to do is the 37 minutes he gets, I want to, you know, get him a minute rest here, a minute rest there, and not three minutes at the start of the game. So we inserted him back into the starting lineup. He shot the ball extremely well, so there's no need to worry about that. Do you feel like this team um, lives and dies by the three, or is that – misrepresentation of your shooting? Well, I think every team lives and dies by something. I mean, some teams live and die by their defense. Some teams live and die by their post play. I mean, our team is a team that can shoot it, and we struggled for the first half of the season shooting the ball. You, you know, we talked about that often. I kept waiting for that team to show up. Well, it finally showed up, and we're really shooting the ball well the last month of the season. I expect that to continue. Do we live by that? Yeah, we live by that. But we also shoot a lot of free throws, which means we get to the basket. We don't score well in the post because of our youth. Uh, Corey's had some good games, especially early in the season. Uh, Kyle had five the other night, and that was like a, that was like 50, you know, for Kyle to get five. So um, we don't score a lot in there. So we have to be able to make shots to win. Um, Lavelle Lucas Perry has been coming on the last couple games off the bench. Is that the, the type of production you've been you've been needing from him off the bench the last? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we need him, one of those three games, we need him to have a game like he had against Kansas City. Uh, we need Ryan Bass to have a game like that. We need Valentine to have a game like he had against South Dakota. You know, we can't just rely on Reggie and Bader to uh, win basketball games for us in three of them in a row. If we're going to win this thing, we're going to need Petros to have a game, Sakura to have a, a seven-rebound game, Valentine to go and have a double-double, you know, like I'm saying. And, Lavelle is a candidate to go put 20 points on the board. He's capable of doing that. So we, we needed one of those games out of him. Uh, in early January, did you think there was any chance that you guys could come back and get the number three seed like this? Well, I, you know, we go back to the bracket buster thing and how that screwed up the schedule. And I've always felt that with such a young team that if we'd have had some time there to get in practice and to get – you know, get off that bad thing we had going and get back to winning that we would be okay because 
you know, Reggie Hamilton's had an unbelievable senior year. And, I mean, what he's done is just, it's remarkable, it's phenomenal, it's just been unbelievable. And so when you have a kid playing that way, you know you're going to win some games. And we just had to get everybody back together, and, and, and it was going to take some time. I did think the schedule was favorable for us for winning late, and uh, we won the games we were supposed to win. Now, Reggie's certainly a candidate for Conference Player of the Year. Uh, what would that mean to the whole program having three consecutive Players of the Year if that were to take place? I don't know, because I don't care about that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'd have a hard time defining what that means. I think it would mean a lot to Reggie, and I think it would mean a lot to Reggie's mommy. And, uh, uh, you know, and I think 20 years from now, Reggie would probably like to say he was the Player of the Year, but he'll probably say he was anyways. Because <laughs> he probably should be, but you know, I, I don't think he'll get it. I mean, I, I don't know. The votes are in, so um, we finished third. I, I would think the guy at Oral Roberts, Dominic Morrison, had a great year. I think he'd win it because his, his team won. But you know what I've told Reggie and I've told players before him? That award, if you could pick one award, pick the MVP of the tournament. Because the MVP of the tournament goes to a guy on the winning team. So if you want to win an award, win the MVP of the tournament because then I know we've won. Well, technically, they distribute those ballots, you know, like five minutes to go. So if it's a close game, could mistakenly go to someone else. I don't know if they'd re-ballot if it went to you ever, so. Have you ever seen where the championship team in that tournament didn't have the MVP? Well, no, I haven't been there. The two times it's been Derek Nelson and last year Keith Benson. Yeah, it was Benson. Okay. All right. Um, I wanted to ask about the bracket buster. I know that's something that you didn't care for that the league was doing, but has did that experience uh, a couple weeks ago down at Illinois State, the way you guys bounced back to win two conference games and didn't seem to show any ill effects from that game, has that softened your stance on it at all? No. No. I mean, the league thinks it's good. The league believes it was a great weekend. Um, the league is looking at the exposure it got. The league is looking at scheduling favorabilities that it helped teams. We don't need help in scheduling, and I don't care about that national exposure. I care about Oakland and winning in the conference. The conference is the most important thing to me. That's why we're in a conference, to win and play the conference. And now we have to go on the road. We have to go to Illinois State. Then we had to fly out to the Dakota, to Kansas City and the Dakotas, and now we have to turn around and fly back out to the Dakotas three weekends in a row. I think that's wrong. I just think it's wrong. And you know what? We're going to fight through it and try and do the best we can. Um, and I'm not going to use it in, as an excuse if we lose, but that's why I'm talking about it beforehand. <laughs> All right. Coach. I can't talk about it after because I'm not using it as an excuse. We'll get it and we'll let you get out of here on that note. We'll see you out in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for the Summit League tournament this weekend. Uh, just a reminder fans at home can watch the game simulcast on Fox Sports Detroit. You can hear that coverage on WDFN AM 1130 with Neil Rule and Mario and Pemba. They're making the trip with us out there, I believe. Yep, they are. They're going, and you can read about it in the Oakland Press. Certainly. This guy right here. I'll send you all the links. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Paul Camp. You can get live updates that way also. And you can follow me on Twitter at... Oh, I don't at do that. never going to happen. That never going to happen. All right. All right, Coach. Yep. Appreciate that.